Hello, I am Alexandra J. Johnson with the Entheos Academy for Optimal Living. Today I am chatting with one of our outstanding professors, Eric Mizell. Eric is one of the leading creativity experts and the author of 30 books. Today I am chatting with him about his course, Your Best Life in the Arts. Hello, Eric. Hi, Alexander. Great to be with you. It is so great to be with you. And we will dive into creativity today. And, you know, we're all creative. We all have, you know, either we're artists, writers, creating our lives, whatever it is. But what is some of the, or what are some of the challenges that we face as creative people? As an artist in a particular discipline, as soon as we say we're a poet or a painter, then we've increased, we've upped the ante, we've increased the challenges, and we've added lots of new difficulties to our life. So it makes a difference whether we mean that we're an everyday creative person, yeah. and then the challenges are just doing the work. It's hard to be creative. Uh, we have a kind of smiley-faced idea about how easy it is to do things, but the reality is it's not so easy to be creative. Mm -hmm. So every creative person has the basic difficulties of creating, basic difficulties with their own personality, namely getting in their own way, and basic difficulties with the world, their work being wanted. And then when you're self-identified as a poet or a painter or a craftsperson, then you have the added difficulties of really wanting to excel at what you do, and then the troubles of a crowded marketplace where you're trying to infiltrate your work into that crowded marketplace. So it's very different if we say, I'm kind of a part-time or I do it as a hobby, as a, a poet or artist, but there's there's definitely more challenges when we say we want to do it professionally. Is that what, is that what you're it's saying? It's a huge yeah. difference. When we invest meaning in that identity piece, change the game entirely. It's one thing to write the occasional poem for your sister's birthday, and another thing to say I'm a poet. I think we understand how much difficulty we've just added to our life by saying I'm a poet. So there's a, there's a big difference. The flip side is if we don't self-identify, if we actually wanted to be a poet or a painter, and we're damping that down, then we've increased our anxiety in a certain way. We're not living the life we wanted to lead. So for that person, that person actually needs to maybe bite the bullet and identify as an artist and invite in all those difficulties that maybe she's trying to keep away by not identifying. Right. So what are some steps or some ways that we can kind of work with this in our everyday life that somebody watching this right now is in the arts and they're like, I would like to move through this. What are some key ways that we could do that? I think there are two key ways. There are, there are many important ways, but there are two key ways. I think the first is instituting a morning creativity practice. People don't get to their work regularly enough and routinely enough. They actually find the idea of regularity a little boring. You know, in our <laughs> teens and 20s, we're, we're doing everything we can to fight that idea about, you know, doing things routinely. Then a time comes where we notice that we're not getting our work done. And that's when we really need to institute a practice. And the reason it should be a morning practice, there are actually three reasons. One is we'd get a lot done. We know that, that if we worked in a daily way on whatever it is we say is important to us, we would get a lot of work done. The second reason is that we get to make use of our sleep thinking if we create first thing in the morning. Whatever we've been thinking about during the night just vanishes unless we turn to our work first thing. So it's actually very important to do our creating first thing in the morning. And then the third reason is we have the experience of having made some meaning on that day already. Right. And the rest of the day can be half meaningless and we won't get depressed. So there are a lot of reasons for instituting this morning creativity practice. That's one important idea. The other important idea is to deal with our own self-talk. Mm. To not say things to ourselves that don't serve us, like I'm not talented or there's too much competition or it's too late. Millions of things that we say to ourselves that don't really serve us. So that cognitive piece, namely noticing what we're saying to ourselves, is tremendously important. And if I had to identify just two things that a creative person could do to really improve his life, it would be to start on a morning creativity practice and watch what he's saying to himself. Hmm. 
Fantastic. So on the watching what we say to ourselves, you know, you write a lot about the psychological aspects. Could you go a little bit into that some more so we can get some understandings of how we limit ourselves about how we talk to ourselves? Certainly. Uh, the, the cognitive piece is really important. And, and cognitive therapists teach a simple three-step process that, that's useful to mention right here. And that's to notice what you say to yourself, which is an act of courage because we're pretty tricky creatures and we don't really want to hear what we're saying to ourselves. So the first step is listening. And then the second step is disputing those utterances that don't serve us. If, if we hear ourselves saying, I'm not talented, the next thing we have to think is no. It doesn't serve me to think that. Mm -hmm. And then the third step is substituting more affirmative language, telling ourselves that we're really okay, that we're really capable of doing this work. If we don't do this, we get depressed and we get anxious. Mm -hmm. And that's why I spent, and also we may get addicted to something that takes our mind off of the work we're not doing. So those three challenges, depression, anxiety, and addiction, are very prevalent in most creative people's lives why I spend a lot of time talking about it, they arise and then they become their own challenges and their own impediments because, as you know, if you're anxious, it's harder to create. If you're depressed, it's harder to create. If you're addicted, it's harder to create. So the process itself provokes these problems and then the problems make more trouble. Right. Yes, I totally get it. <laughs> and I know everybody watching you is like, right on. <laughs> So for this course, who, who's this course for? It's really for everyone, and obviously it's easy to say that, but it really is in the sense that most creative people never think about these issues and never learn actual strategies to handle these issues. Mm -hmm. Either they're taking craft courses, they're learning how to you know, work their camera or work their technique. In school, whether it's undergraduate or graduate school, they're not helped to understand how to live a life in the arts because often their instructors don't really know how to live a life in the arts either. Right. It's, not, it's not something that gets passed down from generation to generation very well. So I think that whether you're a well-established artist who has to make all of the hard choices that a well-established artist has to make about what to do next and where to put your energy, or if you're someone who's tried, put in a lot of hours and still... Haven't, hasn't been that successful at what you do, or if you're just beginning and, and want a really smart heads up on how to negotiate this life, I think it really is a class for everyone. Beautiful. And then what are some of the, so somebody takes the course, what are some of the main takeaways that, that they can hope to receive in the course? Well, I think there are two. One is the naming of the challenges. If we don't have the language for what's going on in our life, it's really hard to deal with our own challenges. So we're going to name the challenges clearly. You're going to understand what might be an existential crisis or an anxiety moment or a stressor. We're going to name the challenges clearly. And then with each telechat, I want to provide maybe between a dozen and 20 actual strategies for dealing with the challenges. It's great to name a challenge, mm -hmm. but it's even better to name the challenge and then provide some strategies for dealing with it. So I think those are the main takeaways, a really smart naming of the challenges, and then a whole arsenal of strategies to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, because it's amazing, the, like you said, being aware of our thoughts, and then being aware of what stops us, and then like, okay, I'm aware of it, but what do I do with this anxiety and fear? And like you said, we just go to numbing, or, you know, like, I'm not... I'm not and sometimes we, sometimes we scorn simple strategies, tactics, and techniques. But in fact, to live a life in the arts, you need lots of tactics and techniques. You need to, have to know how to transition from creating back to the real world. You know how to transition from not creating to creating. There are all kinds of tactics and techniques that are really valuable to learn. And so we're not going to scorn technique. We're going to have a lot of techniques that work. Very cool. And it's so great, too, because I think even people watching this probably are like, I know for me, I felt fear or embarrassment that I felt fear or anxiety around right. my creativity. So it's great just to hear you say, that's a normal part of the process, and I'm going to guide you through it. It's, it's remarkable. It's true, and I think a lot of creative people do feel alone in their difficulties, even though they, they, they understand to some extent that probably an awful lot of people are experiencing the same thing. Because there is so much isolation in the arts and because when talking heads do a celebrity interview, we hardly ever go deep into anything. Mm. 
So they don't they don't get the experience of, of seeing artists talk at a deep level about what's really bothering them. Mm-hmm. So this is their opportunity to, to hear and see some of these things at the right appropriate level. Very cool. Well, I'm very, very excited about this class personally for all the people that are going to benefit for this. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Great. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>